It's a new year, same old strategy. Tesla forced to slash margins on its cars. Coming up here on The Job. Hi folks, Alex Klingelhafer here with Existential Wealth Advisors. It's 7.55 here in the middle part of the country on Friday. It is January 13th, 2023. Here's your morning jog around the economic headlines of the world. We're going to start off with Tesla, which is taking a hacksaw to its prices of Model Y, Model S Plaid, among others here this morning. $13,000 off of the base Model Y, Model S Plaid, 21k off. Listen, Tesla, love you. But at the same time, if you were projecting profit margins at historical rates, you're going to have a bad time. They're suddenly in a price war with the classic legacy automakers who are now rolling out EV fleets by the thousands a day. Oops, you're not the only game in town, which means you have to compete on price now, which is not how Tesla has done for the past decade. This is not great. You have Musk turning on its user base, right? With his sort of right-wing politics. People used to buy Tesla because it made them feel like they were doing something right for the planet. You've got tremendous competition. Guys, maybe we are seeing a return to auto firm valuations instead of tech firm valuations. Let's talk about valuations for banks. All the major banks reported this morning, let's see how they did. Bank of America doing very well. JP Morgan doing okay. Citigroup not doing so great. So like Bank of America, really high exposure to retail. That means rates help them. Citigroup, really big exposure to Wall Street. That means raising rates don't help them as much. You see in America, we have two types of banking. Traditionally, they are sort of separate, right? You have retail banking, lending to consumers, right? Lending to businesses. And then you have investment banking, right? Setting up big deals for multinational corporations. In an era of low interest rates, deals get done. Because it's cheap, right? You want access to cheap money, you're doing deals. And banks that cater to the Wall Street set are doing very well. In retail banking, it's the opposite. It's low volume, low margin, we really want to, excuse me, high, high volume, low margin. We want to do a lot of smaller deals and we want to attract a lot of deposits that we can then earn a spread on. Now, if you're Bank of America and interest rates jump from four to five, that's pretty good. If you're a Charles Schwab, that's excellent. You have tremendous assets that clients will keep at your bank because it's really hard to move a banking relationship. It's not as hard as it used to be, but it's still tedious and no one wants to redo auto pays and that sort of thing. You make the bigger spread while still giving your clients just a pittance on their savings. That is a good business model. Going forward, I think we'll continue to see that alignment. Banks that have more retail exposure continue to do well. Banks that have more institutional exposure tend to not do as well. That's sort of the trend in interest rates. If you want some additional info throughout the weekend, feel free to find me on the internet. I'm out there. Till then, you and your family have a wonderful Friday. I'm out.